Hey there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. And man, I can't believe we are already here to talk about our most anticipated movies for the summer of 2018. As always, I have my lovely guests here. So as usual, before we do get to our honorable mentions and lists, let's start off with everyone one by one, starting off with Mr. Film Fan. I joined first! What the fuck? I'm going by the order. I, you know what? Fine, fine. Okay, I'm gonna start all over just for you. Okay, let's do this. Fine. Bitch, I am joined four times first in a row. Okay, and every single time you like, I'm the last one introduced, and it pisses me off. Okay. <laughs> As always, I have my guests here with me. So before we do get to our honorable mentions and list, let's start off with the first guest here with Auburn Wanderer. <laughs> oh, Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is the Auburn Wanderer, and I was the first person to join. So fuck you, Tony, for trying to introduce me last. God damn it. Uh, it ain't happening this time, okay? Four in a row, baby. Anyway, like I was trying to say. Also, thank you very much for having me on. I enjoy making these videos uh, with you very much. They're a good time. Uh, they're a good job to show off how pretentious I am and how much I don't care about superhero movies, which pisses everyone off, which I just I love doing. I got rid of the Criterion shirt to represent, baby. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um... I'm excited. Um, woo! Uh, what's up, guys? It's uh, Kevin Falk. I'm pretty sure you guys know who I am by now. I've been on Tony's channel uh, a number of times. Always really enjoy uh, doing these videos, specifically the ones in the summer. There's a lot of movies coming out that I'm very anxious to talk about, so let's just get right into it. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you, Tony, for letting me come on here doing the movies that we are looking forward to this summer. And glad to be here with Caden and film fan kevin uh <laughs> oh i see how it is bitch. damn he went there oh. and for the final person joining us tonight that person is film fan 0599 finally what's up you finally fucking introduced last jesus would you shut up you <laughs> shut up bitch okay i am my time i'm deserving oh man um I'm like John Cena, and you're like every young talent that I buried. Um, now oh. 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 this is like roasted hour. I love oh, it. Man. Well, um, hey, oh, what's up, bro. guys? Uh, film fan 0599 here again. I'm pretty sure everybody knows who who the hell I am at this point. I mean, I've been on every single one of these except for the first one. So, hello, everyone, and this is honestly my favorite one to do every year, the uh, summer one, because a lot of you know. You know, the big dog come out to play for the summer. And we've got a pretty solid summer, it seems like, hopefully. Uh, hopefully it's good. And there's some movies I'm really looking forward to. And let's talk about them. So, of course, you guys, before we do get into our top five, we got to go into our honorable mentions. If we have honorable mentions, of course. If we don't, that is perfectly cool. But I do have a couple of honorable mentions similar to last uh, summer. Because last summer I had two honorable mentions. And that is the same for this summer. My first honorable mention is the movie Tag. I am actually really excited for this one. When it comes to comedy movies, this is definitely my most anticipated comedy movie of the summer. I just think the idea is brilliant. I love the cast, like with Jeremy Renner, John Hamm, Ed Helms, I Isla Fisher, Hannibal Barris, everyone else. And the fact that this is based on a true story of these guys that have been playing Tag for like 30 or so years, I just think that's a fascinating story. So the fact that they're turning into a movie, I think is very interesting. So looking forward to that. And for my final honorable mention, which is, which is my number six, it is Ant-Man and the Wasp. I really enjoyed the first Ant-Man. I thought that was a lot of fun. It was a simple heist film, and I think it definitely worked as that. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that continue with Ant-Man and the Wasp. So that's all of my honorable mentions. Now, next up is Auburn Wonder. The legend himself. <laughs> Tony, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm usually the pretentious one who doesn't like doing honorable mentions. Uh, but I actually have like a, a few here. I have like, I think like, let's see. I think I have like a little over 10. I'm not sure yet. I haven't counted it. 
uh, which is surprising. There's just a lot coming out this year, uh, this summer that I, I, I want to see. So here they are. I'll just go in. I'll just go in order. Dark Crimes, First Reformed, A Kid Like Jake, Under the Silver Lake, Hereditary. Uncle Drew! Uh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Woman Walks Around, Sorry to Bother You, Hot Summer Nights, and Yes, People. I do am looking forward to an action movie, Mission Impossible Fallout. Woo! Yes, I, I know it's shocking, but I am really looking forward to that movie. Even though, um, you know, to be fair, you know, the fifth one was, was kind of shitty, but you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. What? What? Yeah, maybe we'll talk about it. This can be very shocking to you guys, but uh, I have a copious amount of uh, honorable mentions. Oh, fuck me. Incredibly shocking, and in no particular order, we have Tully, Terminal, Dark Crimes, First Reformed, Solo, A Star Wars Story, Action Point, American Animals, All Summer's End, Tag, Superfly, Ocean's 8, Hotel Artemis, Won't You Be My Neighbor, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, Under the Silver Lake, Woman Walks Ahead, Blind Spotting, Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot, the Equalizer 2, Hot Summer Nights, Searching, The Wife, Captive State, The Little Stranger, and Kin. Oh, and Best Friends Part 2, that one as well, I forgot that one. And then my 10 through 6 are as follows. Number 10 is Upgrade, number 9 is Christopher Robin, number 8 is Ant-Man and the Wasp, number 7 is 8th Grade, and number 6 is Sicario, Day of the Soldado. Jesus Christ, did you just name every single summer movie coming out? Like, holy shit. <laughs> no, there was... <laughs> oh my There's god. Awesome I'm looking so forward ready. to. I feel so bad for Tony. He has to end this poor thing. Jesus. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera on for this one. Hold on. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Ooh. Okay. Here gonna, it is, everyone. For those who uh, watched the, the schmoes back then, I'm going to do a usual thing that Christian Harlov does. Oh. Arnold will mention. <laughs> All right, we got The Terminal, the new Margot Robbie movie with her, Simon Pegg, and Mike Myers. Uh, Tully with Charlie Theron looks really good. Uh, the Equalizer 2, uh, Heredity, 8th Grade, Sorry to Bother You, Christopher Robin, Ant-Man the Wasp, Action Point, Under the Silver Lake, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, only because the director of A Monster Calls and The Impossible is doing it. Alright, so, alright, my album mentions are Upgrade... Tag, Sicario, Day of the Soldado. I hope I said that right. My boy, Uncle Drew. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry to bother you. A skyscraper for all the wrong reasons. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation. The Equalizer 2, um, Christopher Robin. The Meg, for all the wrong reasons. And and uh, Slenderman. There you go. Okay, now that we got our honorable mentions out of the way, let's get into our top five. Number five. So kicking off my number five is Blumhouse's Upgrade. Ooh. I watched the trailer for this film, and oh my god, it is one of the most insane trailers I've watched in recent memory. This film looks really insane. Logan Marshall which everyone refers to him as the Tom Hardy lookalike. He looks really good in this film. The rest of the cast looks like they're going to have a ton of fun here. I know Lee Winnell, who um, directed Insidious Chapter 3 and writes the Insidious films and stars in them. Well, he's in them, not starring, but he is in them. He is the director of this film, so I'm definitely curious to see how, you ca how he can direct an R-rated action film. Uh, the action looks really insane. The cinematography looks beautiful. It just looks very well directed. And the more I watch this trailer for this film, the more pumped I get. Like, this just gives me the adrenaline rush, and I hope the movie can deliver that for me. Uh, so Upgrade is my number five. I can't wait for this one. All right, so my number five is Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot. Hey. Uh, now, uh, this is a film that I have been looking forward to for this whole year, but uh, with the recent show that came out and me realizing that Gus Van Sant, uh, that's his name, right? Yeah. Gus yeah, Van Sant, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got it right. uh, instructing this, who directed one of my favorite films of all time, Good Will Hunting, and I heard a really great movie, uh, Milk, uh, which I believe got Sean Penn and Best Actor win. Uh, he's a fantastic director, and this has Joaquin Phoenix, who is my favorite actor working today. And you got Jonah Hill, who was a fantastic, really underrated actor who I. Uh, you know, people appreciate him. He's a really, really great dramatic actor. And the story about this film is really fascinating to me. And it looks like a film that doesn't try to sugarcoat the problems of addiction. 
and you know and going through rehab and stuff and it looks like something that's gonna be really riveting and captivating for me as an audience member and those are the films that i look for the most and i think it just looks really really well produced and uh it's a film that because of all the talent behind it and uh how it looks overall uh i'm just really really, really excited to see this film and that's why I, uh that is my number five all right, so just a little, uh, just to preface something before we get into this, in my opinion, I think this looks like one of the best summers in recent memory. Uh, there's a lot of films that I'm kind of upset that I am leaving out of this top five, and right off the bat, my number five, I'm kind of upset that it is this low, but at least it is on the list, and that is uh, what I think looks like possibly the best in this franchise, that being Mission Impossible uh, Fallout. I mean... You know, Mission Impossible is a series that I can't believe is still going as strong as it is. You know, uh, obviously Mission Impossible 2 is a little bit rocky, but ever since Mission Impossible 3, they've each been getting progressively better uh, than the last one, I think. Uh, Ghost Protocol, I think, still being the best, but Rogue Nation is very close to it. There's so much uh, writing on this film. I mean, it looks like all of the sort of uh, past sins that the team has committed, it's finally going to uh, come to haunt them. It kind of reminds me of Civil War in that way, where we're getting into like the internal struggle with Ethan and kind of like the things he's done, the way that we now have this agency that kind of believes that all of them should just be killed and that there should be like a new team. I mean, there's a lot of really interesting ideas in this movie. Michelle Monaghan's coming back. Henry Cavill, uh, of course, is the villain. You know, obviously people may fall in the mustache, but I think he looks really great here. I'm very interested in seeing how he does. Angela Bassett looks really great. Obviously, the stunts are just incredible. It really does amaze me how Cruz is able to pull this stuff off. I mean, even when he breaks his leg, he still keeps going. I mean, he is one of the hardest working actors working today easily. Some people brought this up, and I very much agree. This kind of does feel like the final entry. Just something about this feels like they're wrapping up something. It feels like there's a lot of story that it's all kind of been letting up to this one. Now, I don't know if that's the plan, um, but it does kind of feel like this is might possibly be the end. I really hope we do get an explanation why Jeremy Renner isn't in this one, because obviously he's been such an integral part of the last two movies. I do hope they give an explanation for that. But either way, I think this movie looks fantastic. I think it's going to give us maybe the closure that we are looking for, and that is why it is my number five. All right, let's go. All right, uh, my number five is a film that. Okay, this is probably the only <clears throat> film that hasn't doesn't have a trailer. So, but based on who's the main star and the director behind it is why I have it on my list, and that is Miles Twenty Two. Hmm. So, uh, Miles oh. Twenty Two is the newest Peter Berg film with with, and it's the fourth collaboration with him and Mark Wahlberg. And I love both Peter Berg and Mark Wahlberg. Sure, Peter Berg hasn't have not all of his movies are great. Like you no, know, Hancock was okay, and Battleship. We're not gonna talk about that. That movie is <laughs> shit. <laughs> but all his other movies are good. All his other movies are great, or at least good. Like The Rundown is a fun movie. Uh, Friday Night Lights is great, but it's his movies with Mark Wahlberg that really proves to me why Peter Berg is not only one of the most underrated directors working today, but also one of the best directors, because Lone Survivor and Deepwater Horizon were both on my top 10 of those years, and I really like Patriot's Day, so and seeing them come back together and working on this movie gets me excited. Peter Berg, you know, I got trust in him and Mark Wahlberg, so... I'm sure this make sure this is the fourth home run for them. So yeah, that is why it's my number five. All right, my number five is Ant Man and the Wasp. Um, Ant Man uh, was a movie that I really loved from the uh, MCU. I thought that was a great uh, heist film. It was you know had some fun elements, had some of the fun, uh, most fun action sequences in all of the uh, uh, MCU, especially that last action sequence with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, which that was great. Um, but uh, <laughs> but man, uh, yeah. but um. You know, this seems like it's going to be a really fun sequel. Like, um, this is this actually does take place before Infinity War, which is pretty interesting. And, um, you know, it seems like it will just have, you know, the same fun element that the uh, first one have. Like, uh, I had some great humor in the trailer and stuff like that. And Hello Kitty Pe Pez. That's the only thing <laughs> you need to know. It's amazing. So, yeah, um, my number five is uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> Thank you. 
So my number four is possibly my most anticipated A24 film of this year, and that's Hereditary. Um, This trailer really got under my skin. And when I say that, I mean, it really got under my skin. It kind of horrified me. And it's not often trailers do that, but this movie really did that. I got to give the marketing team a lot of credit for that. The storyline looks really engaging. The performances look really impressive as well as the cinematography and the direction the writing just looks like it's going to be very clever and it's gonna have moments where it's gonna really creep you out and maybe even traumatize you a bit i hope this movie definitely lives up to that because there's definitely a lot of potential for something like this there's nothing more i could say honestly just just looks like a movie that will have really stellar performances and great direction and stellar writing all around i'm definitely really hyped to see this one so that is my number four hereditary all right my number four is a pray before dawn uh now this is a film that i think looks just fantastic uh the overall story to this film just seems really 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 riveting and captivating and the way it's shot how brutal it looks and just how gritty it feels it's just it just feels to all like centered in reality and it just really seems like something that's really gonna just like take over like my like my mind and my like attention and i'm just really excited i think the story sounds really interesting and uh i, f- I feel like it's a film that's gonna focus so much on realism but get it right uh and uh you know i think that this is gonna be uh a really strong year for a24 and i hope this is an example of that uh and i think that a prayer before dawn looks fantastic and that's why it's been before My number four, uh, this is a movie that I don't think enough people are talking about, and uh, I really hope does get a lot of love, and that is Sorry to Bother You. Now, this movie kind of came out of nowhere for me. I heard about it at film festivals and things like that, and this looks really interesting. What I love about this film is that it's a film that's going to have a lot of social commentary about racism and certain issues that are going on within the black community and gentrification and things like that. But it's not trying to be in your face. And instead, it's using that, you know, but with comedy. And I think those two elements look like they're going to blend very well together. The film also looks very weird and innovative. And the plot in general, I really do love. I mean, just the idea that he's like this you know, he works as like this sales call guy and he can't seem to get a customer because they only really respond to like high pitch white voices. I mean, it's a really clever idea, honestly. I haven't really seen something like that before, but it is actually a very prevalent issue. And I think this film is going to explore that very well. Lakeith Stanfield, I think is really starting to become a fantastic actor. I mean, I haven't seen the episode of Atlanta that everyone's talking about, but I heard that's like the best episode of the show. He was fantastic in Get Out. He was one of the best things about I think the Death Note movie for sure as much as people don't like that I know pe- people really seemed to like him in that movie and he looks really great here Tessa Thompson as well is really making a name for herself so there's just a lot of potential uh, with this movie I think this just looks really wacky and goofy but also looks like it's gonna have like I said a lot of really great social commentary it's gonna have a great message behind it and I'm very interested in seeing how this does turn out I've heard from multiple sources that this is like the Brigsby Bear Swiss Army Man of this year and I'm hoping it is but i'm hoping that it's not in the sense that people do end up seeing this one so definitely you know i am very much looking forward to this one for sure and that is why it is my number four here's a warning for all of you my top four are all sequels Hmm. so uh yeah yeah that will give you a heads up but my number four is sicario 2 i love i love the first sicario it was one of my favorite films of 2015 um even though the nevo noob is not coming back um, I'm glad that uh, is Taylor Sheridan writing this. Yeah, yes, yes. he's writing this. Yeah, yes, he is. I'm glad he's coming back because he's a uh, he's one of the best screenwriters in the business now. Oh, easily. Yeah, like with Hell or High Water and uh, Wind River. Uh, Sicario Two looks great. Uh, Benicio del Toro is you know he was one of the best parts about he was to me the best performance in the first one. So it's glad to see him back. Josh Brolin already having. Already, he's becoming the MVP of the year because with yep. this an Infinity War and a certain movie that we'll get to later. But yeah, he is kicking ass this year, and even the girl from Transformers: The Last Night. Ah! 
Yes, let's go, bitches. <laughs> yeah, but I may I don't blame her for that movie. I blame Michael Bay. She can give a good performance if she's under a better director, and hopefully, in in the, from the trailer, she looks like she's doing a good job. So, yeah. So I just can't wait to see this movie. Hopefully, it's just as good as the first one. Uh, so yeah, that is why it's my number four. My number four is Solo, a Star Wars story. Um, as uh, as everybody knows, I am a huge Star Wars nut. It's no surprise to anyone. And uh, <laughs> but um, you know, I despite the obvious issues that this movie has had, and I'm fully aware of it. I'm still looking forward to it. And plus, the trailers have actually been surprisingly really good. And I have, you know, thought they like it. Looks fun, honestly. It just looks like a fun ride, a fun adventure to go on with uh, Han Solo. I am interested actually to see what his backstory was and stuff like that. And I do think actually the movie has a pretty good cast, especially Donald Glover as uh, Lando Calrissian, which is going to yes! Yeah, yes, 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 what perfect timing. Um, but yes, you know, um, but yeah, uh, I think it'll probably be the best element of the movie to me. And the action looks really fun, honestly. Like, I think from a lot of the, uh, from the trailers and stuff like that, it seemed like they're just going to have a lot of fun with the movie. And, you know, I just hope that it's just good. You know, it doesn't have to be amazing or spectacular or anything. I just want to, you know, have a good time with this film. And, you know, it's good to see a Star Wars film that's actually coming out in the summer again. You know, and not in December, which is cool. So, yeah, so that's always a plus, too. So, yeah, my number four is Solo, A Star Wars Story. So, my number three is actually Christopher Robin. Nice. Um, and the reason it's this high is because I am a huge fan of We the Pooh. We the Pooh is definitely part of my childhood, as I'm sure for most people out there. Um, I remember just growing up, uh, just watching the movies and being excited for every movie that comes out and have collecting the toys and even reading the books. Like, I was a nut. I still even do adore the characters to this day. So seeing that they're making a way the Pooh movie where Christopher Robin is now all grown up and we see him have a little reunion with his good old friends. It's very nice. And this is supposed to be some kind of farewell to the characters. And I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, they will execute that. Ian McGregor looks like he'll make a great uh, older Christopher Robin for sure. And it's going to be exciting to see all the um, characters come together, except, um, in the style of like a stuffed animal kind of animation. It's not like 3D animation. It's animated as if they were like real stuffed animals, uh, which is actually really cool. I actually think that's a nice touch. When I did watch the teaser trailer at first, I did find it to be a little off-putting. But the more I did watch the teaser trailer, I did get used to it. And I really love the style that they went with it. Um, and it just looks really beautifully directed, too. There isn't really much to say. I don't know too much about the storyline, which I'm very happy about. I just hope it delivers on being this nice little, I guess you could say, farewell to the characters and just seeing what the life of grown-up Christopher Robin is all about. So for that reason, Christopher Robin is actually my number three. Uh, my number three is also Christopher Robin. Oh! Yeah! Oh! oh! All right. Nice. Uh, so if people don't know, I... Uh, I, I grew up liking Disney and stuff, but the only character I truly ever fucking loved was goddamn Winnie the Pooh and the whole Thunder Acre Wood. And oh my god, I love those characters. I love that universe. It's so cute, in my opinion. I just love the chemistry. Between oh, all yeah. Because of Robin, I just, oh my god. So uh, when this movie was announced, I was very excited. And the teaser trailer uh, did not let me down. Uh, I think it looks really, really good. Um, and it's this high because of the nostalgia level, obviously, but also I do think it's going to be a really well done story. It's going to be something different for this universe. You know, this is kind of going to be like the finale of it all, apparently, uh, which makes me sad. But you know what? At the end of the day, I feel like this is a franchise and like a story that honestly, it's sad to say this, but it won't connect as much with younger audiences nowadays since they come from such different kind of generations and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
So I think this is going to be, like, a good, like, adult kind of, like, themed, like, you know, film with, the, like, the cuteness and innocence of, like, the, you know, the, the like, uh, like, you know, Winnie the Pooh and, like, Tigger and, you know, uh, Piglet and, you know, Rabbit and Rue and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, you know, we got uh, Ewan McGregor as Christopher Robin, who looks great so far. I'm just really excited for this. I think the two looks really good. I like, um, I like that. I like how it looks so far. I do hope that the actual final film is a bit more like you know colorful and stuff, and not as like dreary and dark because you know it is fucking Winnie the Pooh after all. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this because I just I love this character so much, and I do think it looks well done. Uh, but there are also but I guess there's, there's more movies I'm looking forward to more. But uh, that's not that, that that's not trying to take away anything from how excited I am for this. These characters mean a lot to me, and I'm really hoping this is a great final conclusion of them that has some great uh, elements of like you know nostalgia, but some darkness. And I just hope it's a really satisfying conclusion. That's like Christopher Robin is my number three. All right, my number three um, is a film that I've been looking forward to for a while now, and that is Hereditary. Uh, I, you know, once again, I'm going to agree with uh, Tony here. This is easily one of the most unsettling and I think scary tropes I've seen in a while, and not in the way other horror movies are. Like, there weren't really jump scares in this trailer like there are with other films. There wasn't really this one moment that scared me. It just gave me this very uneasy sort of atmosphere. It made me feel um very uneasy and made me feel on edge and i think that's something that this film is going to do incredibly well the story in general i really do love it's like three different generations of women you know one who has died one who is now a mother who is kind of mourning and the other is uh you know their daughter i think it's a very interesting idea overall tony collette looks fantastic here just a really great cast overall um Millie Shapiro, who I'm very surprised to see this. The only thing I've seen her in prior to this is uh, Matilda the Musical, but she looks fantastic. Alex Wolf, who is really making a name for himself. Uh, just, and Dowd, fantastic to see her here. Of course, you know, Leftovers Vet. Um, very happy to see, you know, just the entire cast here. Like I said, the movie looks very creepy. It's a very compelling story. Uh, you know, I've heard many reports that this is like one of the scariest films of the decade. And I know we hear that every single year, but with a trailer this scary and this ominous, I genuinely believe it. I think this could be an incredibly scary and different film. And I think this definitely has tons of potential. A24 has been killing it in terms of horror films, in my opinion. And uh, I think this definitely definitely could be one of their strongest for sure. Um, so yeah, I am definitely really excited for this film and that is why it is my number three. Uh, my uh, number three is uh, Mission Impossible Fallout. Now, uh, the Mission Impossible movies, it's one of those franchises that gets better and better with each film. Um, the first one is very good. The second one can suck a dick. The third... Don't expect John who like that. <laughs> the third one is very underrated. The fourth one is amazing, and and Rogue Nation, sorry, Caden, is amazing. No. <laughs> Fallout is looks incredible. Now you can say that it looks like oh, this looks like a bunch of clips of Tom Cruise trying to kill himself with all these stunts. <laughs> but dude, the guy's like the American Jackie Chan, all right? He can do anything. Pretty much is. Like the guy, the guy's in his fifties, and he's doing, and he's still doing his shit. Other cast members from the other movies back, uh, Simon Pegg, Rebecca Ferguson, and all of them back. Uh, the action scenes look incredible, and Henry Cavill. I'm interested to see how he turns out. You know him, because we all know what happened with the whole mustache thing. With the oh movie. yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't turn out well in that movie, but you know, I'm I'm sure he's gonna be a great villain in in here. And yeah, and Christopher McQuarrie, like I thought he did a great job with Rogue Nation. So I hope. And I really hope that this movie is fantastic because it's this franchise. Like I said, this franchise just gets better and better with each film. And yeah, you can say that uh, you might look at all these movies like, ah, they're kind of all the same thing. It's just Tom Cruise doing some stunt that might get him killed. But it's just so jaw-dropping that you're like, holy shit, he's actually doing this. So yeah, like, uh, yeah, I thought I think it looks incredible. That's why Fallout is my number three. All right, uh, my number three is also uh, Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, oh, 
Uh, you know, uh, the Mission Impossible franchise is probably one of my uh, personal favorite franchises. Um, I really love the first movie a lot. Uh, the second movie is not good. Um, the third movie is great, actually. I think the third movie is actually really fantastic. I think a lot of people really overlook the third movie. Um, the fourth one, uh, Ghost Protocol, is my personal favorite of the franchise. And uh, Rogue Nation, I do think, is great. Hell, I think the third one's even a bit better than Rogue Nation, to be completely honest with you. Um, but uh, Fallout seems like it could be another great entry in the series, honestly. It really does uh, seem like that because, you know, uh, like Gary said, Tom Cruise does all these crazy, you know, stunts and action sequences and stuff like that. And, you know, just the stuff that they have going for in the trailer. Like, the trailer to this is like, uh, one of my, what the hell? <laughs> Where did Tony go? Okay. What the Tony, hell happened? Tony, we panic for a moment. You now. <laughs> I'm alive. I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah, good there. thing because this would have stopped in like five minutes. <laughs> but yeah, from the tra uh, the trailer to this has been one of my favorite trailers of the year. To be honest with you, like I liked how it was executed. Also, I liked how they uh, mixed uh, friction by Imagine Dragons with the Mission Impossible theme song. That was like one oh, of the coolest. Yeah. That, that was like was. one of the coolest mixings with the music I've seen in a while with a trailer. And you know, I really also it's interesting to see you know Henry Cavill play a villain because we're so used to him playing a hero and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, he's, he plays like the great the greatest superhero of all time, and now it's now he's you know playing a villain, so it's interesting to see him take a turnaround on that. I can't wait to see how he's executed with that and everything. So. Yeah, I'm very excited for Mission Impossible Fallout. I hope it's another great installment in this awesome franchise. All right, now we get into our top two, ladies and gentlemen. So what can my top two be? My number two is Uncle Drew. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm just leaving. Joking. Bye, guys. This has been fun. Bye-bye. I'm leaving. Oh man. Okay. Fuck. Have fun, Kevin. Okay. So <laughs> that uh, that one I just said to get a reaction out of Kevin. My number two is actually Mission Impossible Fallout. Nice. I am, nice. I am, I am curious about Uncle Drew, though. I will say that I am curious about that movie. Um, <laughs> Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, like what pretty much what you guys have been saying. I am a fan of the majority of the films in the series. Uh, Tom Cruise looks like he'll be really great here, along with the rest of the cast, like with Ving Rhames or Simon Pegg, and Rebecca Ferguson. You have Michelle Monaghan returning, which is gonna be very awesome. I can't wait to see that. And Henry Cavill, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what he's gonna do in this film. The storyline just looks very intriguing. And it's very interesting how it's continuing off where Rogue Nation ended. Because normally this is the thing where they continue on and on and on. So it's kind of cool that they're kind of doing that. Also, the fact that Christopher McQuarrie is returning to direct this installment. So I'm looking forward to him doing that. And as you can expect with the Mission Impossible movie at this point, the action scenes look insane. Tom Cruise, you are an insane man, but I respect you that you are so committed to your craft. So I look forward to seeing whatever crazy stunts Tom Cruise has to showcase in the sixth film. It just looks like it could be a very exciting and fun and entertaining film to hit the summer movie season. Yeah, it just looks like one hell of a film and I hope it definitely lives up to that. So that is my number two, Mission Impossible Fallout. My number two is uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Uh, now, uh, to preface, I've never seen a single episode of uh, the Mr. Rogers show, whatever. What, is that what the show was called? Yeah. Yeah, I right, believe so it was the Mr. Yeah, I believe that's what yeah. yeah. I've never seen an episode of the, uh, I've seen, like, clips and stuff, but I'm so excited for this documentary because, first of all, the trailer made me cry. Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought the trailer was a little edited and it hit me in the heartstrings. But I think this looks like a, just a, a fantastic documentary. It looks, it looks like it's gonna go into the essence of what made um, uh, Mr. Rogers, you know, the man himself, and you know, the character. I guess you could say what made him such a prolific, you know, figure in you know pop culture and with children and stuff, and you know why he is so influential and uh, what what made him who he really is. And it looks like just like a great, you know, like study of the man. And it looks like it's gonna. 
have, you know, it's more emotional moments. And I think it's going to be, I hope it's a really, really well done documentary. It's getting a lot of hype and uh, I can't wait to see it. So uh, that is why I'm, uh, Wish Me My Neighbor is my number two. So yeah. All right. My number two, uh, I'm going to say right now, this is probably going to be very predictable what my number two and number one is. My number two is a film that for years, everyone has been clamoring for we've gotten so many unnecessary pixar sequels but finally we are going to have incredibles 2 i'm so hyped for this movie i'm like i said i'm pretty sure uh most people are i mean what can i say about this that hasn't already been said it's incredibles 2 we've wanted it for years now we're gonna get more into some of the characters we now have uh elastigirl she's gonna be like the focus of this movie i think that's very interesting we have different characters going through all kinds of different stuff uh you know violet's going through adolescence as they say in the trailer and things like that it looks like they're gonna retain everything that really made the first one great they're gonna have the really clever smart humor in there they're gonna have some really nice you know dramatic moments in there they're gonna have some really great i think social commentary as well uh the new characters look really great seeing sam jackson again that was great i mean there was just so much to love when it comes to this movie john ratzenberger is the villain they're keeping him like really hush hush they're not really do they're not really showing a lot with him in this film and i think that is actually a very uh smart choice because obviously while we do want to see him i feel like there's a lot more that we don't know about him yet so i'm very interested in getting into you know more about his character and things like that i think this movie has tons of potential for sure this is probably going to be the best animated film right next to isle of dogs this year and uh, i am definitely very hyped for this one and uh without a doubt number two is with definitely incredible too well kevin funny you mentioned that because my number two is also the incredibles too <laughs> <laughs> now uh yeah yeah, my number one and number two was pretty hard for me, but mm -hmm. I had to pick this one because pretty much like Kevin said, this this is the one Pixar movie that everybody wanted a sequel to. Like, The Incredibles is, like, one of the best... It, it's, like, behind the Toy Story movies is, like, the best Pixar movie. And, like, and for many... And over the years, we've been getting the sequels to other Pixar movies. We've been getting sequels to Cars... And those movies are, well, the second one is crap. And the third one is just mediocre. And we got a sequel to Finding Dory, I mean, Finding Nemo with Finding Dory, which was good, but, but it was kind of unnecessary. But The Incredibles, you know, after watching the first one and how it ended, you're like, I want to see more adventures with this family. And pretty much what Kevin said, it is, it's one of the things that worked about the first one was that, this was actually a real family. Mm -hmm. Like it is like yeah. Sure, like you like you said like with Violet coming with adolescence and all that and it it looks so fun and it looks like hopefully it's just as good as the first one. I'm I'm setting my you know, expectations a little low because I don't wanna be set up with disappointment. But, you know, I mean considering how much I love the first one, it's like an A plus movie to me. And, you know, also seeing Sam Jackson back, that's always a pleasure because the where's my super suit line is one of the greatest quotes in <laughs> history. Also, Jack-Jack, you know, seeing how his powers kind of comes to play in this movie. I'm excited for that. And also, I'm excited to hear, like, all the new voice cast. You get Bob Odenkirk, you know, Better Call Saul fame for all you people out there. Uh, Catherine Keener and also Sophie Sophia Bush. You know, they're, a lot, they're in the cast. Brad Bird, you know, he's been knocking out of the park when it comes to animated movies like Iron Giant, the, the original Incredibles, and uh, Ratatouille, which I think is very underrated. And, and you know, at the end, going back to Mission Impossible, you know, he did Ghost Protocol, which was great. He did a great job with that. And Tomorrowland, I know some people are kind of half and half with that movie. I thought it was fine. But... Hopefully, you know, this might get him back up. So, yeah, that is why Incredibles 2 is my number dos. Yeah, what was on my D? I guess we all have the same number two. Uh, my number two is also Incredibles 2. Is it incredible that we all have the same number two? Hey, oh, 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 I love you all too. All right. No. But no, um, but no, seriously. Um, Incredibles 2, uh, 
you know, I, I don't want to really repeat what they just said, but basically, we've been waiting for this movie for almost 15 years. This is the one we've wanted the most out of any Pixar sequel. And Incredibles is one of my favorite Pixar movies. I do love The Incredibles a lot. It's one of my personal favorite superhero movies as well. And it's just an overall incredible film, especially like where the first one leaves off. It it's like leaves open for a sequel. It leaves open for more, like more adventures with this family. And I'm glad that we're finally getting it, honestly. And um, you know, I really liked um, the trailers that we've had so far for it. Um, the animation looks great, as usual, with all, all the Pixar movies and stuff like that. Um, it's great that all the cast is coming back for it. And I can't wait for it, honestly. So, yeah, my number two is The Incredibles 2. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we get to our numero uno. So, my most anticipated film of the summer is, as expected, as you could predict, The Incredibles 2. Um, I think that's very obvious. It was going to be Avengers Infinity War, but due to that movie game pushed to uh, April 27th now instead of May 4th, you know, that's no longer a summer film. I can't believe how long we've had to wait for Incredibles 2. Considering since the original film ended off with the cliffhanger, you would think maybe Brad Bird would have focused making the sequel, maybe after Ratatouille, because I know Ratatouille was his next film after The Incredibles. So you would think maybe after that film, he would have focused on it. But I guess maybe he wanted to focus on doing live action films like Mission Impossible, Ghost Pro, Call in Tomorrowland, which is very cool. I think that's kind of nice, very nice that he branched out. We, we've definitely waited an incredibly long time. Oh my time God. For this sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Cha Ching. There's a pun right there. And I can't wait. Um, like what everyone has been saying, uh, one of the things that just makes The Incredibles stand out, it's not only that it's a superhero movie, but I think it's because of the whole family dynamic. You can actually uh, relate to this family, or if you don't maybe relate, you can kind of see where they're coming from at least. And the sequel looks like it's really going to expand on the family aspect, which I'm really looking forward to. And like what Kevin said, it's very interesting how they're centering more around Elastigirl, which I'm very excited to see. And as well as when the family definitely teams up and fights, because I know everyone has been worried. Oh, is it just going to be Elastigirl? Now nah, I'm pretty sure the family's going to have enough time to fight together. I'm not really worried about that personally. Um, the animation looks absolutely incredible. No pun intended. Um, oh I, my I God, swear. The no, fuck no. Up. No pun intended. I promise that was not intended this time. It just looks really beautiful. It looks even possibly better than the first film, uh, obviously because of how much um, technology has advanced, but the animation looks great. The action sequences look very exciting too. It honestly has everything you want to see an incredible sequel based on the marketing. And I definitely hope um, the sequel lives up to that. Um, even if it's not as good as the first, I hope it could be at least a solid film at best. And for all those reasons, that is why The Incredibles 2 is my most anticipated film of the summer. All right, everyone. The big moment. I've been waiting. The only number one that matters. Yes. I've been waiting to reveal this number one for so fucking long. And no, it is not Uncle Drew, surprisingly, guys. Oh, thank God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is show dogs. Now, <laughs> yes! Yes! show dogs looks like the most metaphorical film ever made. Um, uh, my number one is uh, Eighth Grade. Uh, awesome. Now, uh, this film looks uh, freaking amazing. If I can be honest, uh, this is one of the most displayed films of the year, uh, up there for my most. I just finished Eighth Grade. Uh, I'm a freshman now. And Eighth Grade is a year where I feel like you, most people start to you know, sense a change in them, like right, their bodies and how they think and their are all like, you know, hormones and stuff. And, you know, with the social media age, I think it's a very, it's a, it's a hard concept to understand, but I think that Bo Burnham, um, ha from the trailer, I think he has a really good grasp on what issues affect, uh, kids like myself at this age the most. And I think it, while it looks, you know, funny at points, I think it, it does have a lot of really, really good, um, you know, uh, substance behind it. And, I am really, really excited for this film because of that. I think it looks extremely well produced, really well acted, uh, and I think it's really going to capture the sense of, you know, like a school environment and, you know, trying to be yourself. And it's a really tough age. And, you know, going through what you go through, it's just, it's a, it's an age of confusion. It's a year of confusion. And it's just a lot of 
emotions going on. It's a hard thing to really put your grasp around, but I, I, I think this movie is going to do a good job doing that. Uh, I'm really, really excited to see this movie. I think it looks fantastic, and that's why 8th grade is my number one most anticipated film for the summer 2018. All right, so this is going to be like the most predictable uh, number one ever, but my number one without a doubt is Deadpool 2. Deadpool was, I think, one of the best standalone sort of films we've had. It was so self-aware. It really was so unapologetic. It just went for it. It didn't really hold anything back. It was really violent. It, it was a really great character study of Wade Wilson. I thought it did a really great job with that. Brian Reynolds, I mean, was just so perfectly casted in that role. Really, that that was a movie that kind of fundamentally you know change the way we look at superhero movies because now we can get r-rated superhero movies and this one it's obviously very highly anticipated and what i really love about this trailer is that it really does look like they are not at all going to be a rehash of the first film this is very much going to feel more like a team-up movie uh it's i think it's because we're not getting that x-force movie we were originally supposed to get a double two and an x-force movie but they've kind of combined that here and i am definitely down for that i really love the plot josh brolin i mean talk about um just having the just the career of your life honestly i mean just imagine if you were in two of the biggest movies of the year avengers infinity war and deadpool 2 and not only that but you play the big villain in both of those movies is just so unprecedented like we never really see that happen and the fact that josh brolin is actually going to be doing that this year is incredible i think he looks fantastic as cable there's so many great jokes with that as well and it looks like every single thing that like you could think of Deadpool's really referencing. I love the ja the jabs at DC. I love him calling him Thanos. I just I love all that stuff. I even loved in the, you know, teaser trailer when you had the whole thing with him saying that, you know, he called him uh, a dumb fuck and he said that was lazy writing. That was fantastic. Just so many great jokes here. The new characters look great. Zazzy beats, you know, as Domino looks really great. And then of course, the legend himself, Peter. I mean, yes. That's yes. Great random just out of nowhere character but i'm so down for this i love this it. just some normal guy that has literally no superpowers whatsoever and they're really going all out as far as to make a twitter account for him that not only um you know was around but it's been around like a week before the trailer came out and nobody noticed it it's just genius marketing overall i think this movie has so much potential i think they are definitely um dialing up to 11 for sure they are really upping the stakes in this one i do think it's going to be darker than the first movie but it's definitely not getting rid of the humor or anything like that. I think Deadpool is a fantastic series. I really hope that this continues to maintain that really just ballsy energy that the first movie had. Uh, I am very excited for this. And uh, without a doubt, Deadpool 2 is everything I want in a summer movie and definitely is my number one. Similar to my number one would obviously have been Infinity War, but you know, since it's not a summer movie anymore, which it's not, uh, it's not a summer movie. Please stop saying it is. It's not a summer movie. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Thank you. Thank Deadpool you. 2 is for sure my number one. I wonder what Gary's number one is going to be. It's, yeah, it's really it's really hard to decide. Based off his profile picture, I think it's also going to be show dogs. I'm not sure about yeah, it. Yeah, no, guys, 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 guys. I had to turn on my camera for this. My number one. When I saw the trailer, I thought this not only looks like the best movie of the summer, but probably the best movie of the year and of all time. My number one most anticipated film of the summer. Uncle Drew. Oh, God. Yes! <laughs> yes! 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 Go, Celtic! Beat the fuck for our game seven, baby! We don't need that man Kyrie. Nice day, guys. Nice day. Go, Celtic! Come on. Come on. It's obvious. This The guy, the motherfucker is my profile picture. It's Deadpool, too. Deadpool 2. Alright, look, look, look. look. Uh, yeah, once Kevin gets back in here, he's being like, alright, 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 alright. Let's go, let's go. Let's, I'm gonna explain it. Look, Deadpool was in my top three of 2016. Like, if it wasn't for La La Land Arrival, it would have been my number one. And, uh, and, we you know, when when it was announced that Tim Miller wasn't coming back, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. But, you know, watching the trailer, like the Bob Ross trailer, that that was genius. Um, yeah, the yeah the recent trailers, the, like like Kevin said, 
when they poke jabs at, you know, Josh Brolin being Thanos and at the DC Universe, that one got me so hard. It was like, oh, oh he's going that far. And pretty much without the first Deadpool, not, not only you, Kevin Fowler also kind of forgot, without this movie, we, Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool pretty much saved his career. Yeah. Right? Pretty much, because before that, he's been having bomb after bomb after bomb. That's true, yeah. And this was like, his, this is his baby. You can tell that he put his heart and soul into this character, and he loves this character. And like you said, going back with Sicario 2, like Josh Brolin is pretty much going to be, probably going to be the MVP of the year with this movie and Infinity War and Sicario 2. The guy is a fucking beast. And uh, Zazie Beetz as Domino looks great. Um, it's fun seeing the, some of the original characters back, like, you know, uh, Colossus and Nicosonic Teenage Warhead. And uh, the Owl, Blind Owl, coming back. And Dopender. I love that character so much. Uh, even TJ Miller. Um, you know, I've seen all these new characters, like guys like Terry Crews and Bill Skarsgård, Pennywise himself. Oh, and, yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know that get Caden Sniffles happy, but yeah, um, yeah. And the action looks great. The movie looks hilarious. Like the LL Cool J song, Mama Say Knock You Out, fits perfectly with the movie. And, and also, yes, Peter is God. Peter is God. I think this movie is going to lay in the hands of Ryan Reynolds and the writers because they they pretty much know this character. So maybe it might be one of the good comedy sequels. So yeah, Deadpool 2 is my number one most anticipated. Sorry. Because my number one is also Deadpool 2. How, ha, 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 what a fucking surprise. Well, Jesus, it's not like everybody saw that coming, right? No, Deadpool was actually my number one best movie of 2016. Um, I love that movie a lot. It's one of my favorite superhero movies of all time now. I think it's a really excellent superhero origin story film. I really love the humor a lot to it. It was very meta, very, you know, um, self-aware of itself. And it just made for a really genius movie. And it was really fantastic. It had some really cool action sequences to it, too. Ryan Reynolds is literally Deadpool. He's literally the character. And, you know, he did a fantastic job. I thought that was just overall an amazing film, and there was a ginormous reason why it was my best movie of 2016. So now we have the sequel, which I'm highly, highly anticipating for. I really loved all the trailers, honestly, to this. I think the marketing has been really good for this uh, yep. so far. Um, I mean, first we had the whole Bob Ross trailer, which was one of the funniest things I had seen in a while. And then you had, you know, the actual official trailer, which was great. I really liked, um, you know, a lot of the, the action seems like it's even, hell, this might seem like it might be more balls to the wall than the first movie was. Like, I think, feel like they're just cranking it up to an 11 with this one, which is awesome, you know, because with the sequel, I feel like you kind of need to do that. You need to, you know, not to the point where it's, you know, like overdoing it, but, you know, just try and crank it up just a bit more. You know, Ryan Reynolds seems like he's going to do a great job as a character again. It's great to see characters like Domino and Cable finally making their live-action debuts because I really do like those characters a lot. And, yeah, it's going to be awesome seeing them on the big screen. So, yeah, Deadpool 2 is easily my most anticipated film of the summer. All right, everybody. That is our top five most anticipated movies of summer 2018. Comment down below and let me know what are your top five anticipated movies for summer 2018. And now I would like to say thank you to everyone, starting off with Auburn Wonderer. Shut the fuck up, bitch, okay? Uh, uh, so, uh, thank you very much for having me on. Thank you for introducing me first this time. I really fucking appreciate it after all these fucking times I've joined first. Thank you. Um, uh, bitch. <laughs> and, uh, I am just, uh, very, uh, happy I get to join these. I'm uh, really gratefully, uh, let me join these because I really enjoy doing these and, and they make me happy. And I like showing my love of film. I like seeing everyone else excited for what they're excited for. And uh, even though I have very, very different tastes for a lot of these people in here, I mean, it's, it, I, I really like seeing people excited for what they love. And you know, it's it's cool, okay. And uh, just so people don't think I'm that pretentious, I think Deadpool 2 looks really good. But uh, 
I just, it's just not on my list, okay? Anyways, thank you for having me on. If people want to check out my channel, it's just music, honestly. It's, it, should, it will be in the link in the bio because I'm pretty sure Tony will put it in the description. Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so thank you very much for having me on. I enjoyed being here with everyone else. Once again, Tony, thank you for having me on. Very much uh, enjoy being here. Um, I, similar to Caden, enjoy, you know, I do enjoy those pretentious films, but I also do love those blockbusters. I really do like the blend of the two. Uh, always enjoy really, you know, sharing my love for film and things like that on here. Uh, like I said, I, I said before and I'll say it again, I do think that this is definitely one of the more promising summers that we've had in a while. There's a lot of great stuff coming out. Uh, once again, thank you for having me on and hopefully this summer is better than both of the, the last two we've had combined thank you tony for letting me on here and if you guys i don't do videos on my channel but i do do reviews on stardust you can find me on stardust under uh, mc deadpool or gary rucker and uh yeah yeah and so yeah you can get the stardust app yourself if you don't have it so yeah thank you and uh, thank you, uh, Tony, once again uh, for having me on here. Uh, I always love uh, doing these uh, top five. Honestly, there's some of the uh, videos I always look forward to doing the most, especially uh, the uh, this one because the summer is a very exciting time to talk about for movies and stuff like that. Um, I probably had the most generic fucking list out of everybody in this goddamn panel, but you know what? <laughs> Who cares? But you know what? Who cares? Because it's what I love, and, you know, it's the stuff I'm looking forward to. You know, I enjoyed being here with uh, my boy Caden, you know, uh, oh. Yes, yes. The the most spiciest man alive, um, you know, uh, Kevin. And, of course, my boy, uh, MC Deadpool. Yeah, so, boy. My green so, uh, yeah, thank you for having me on, and uh, hopefully this is a good summer movie season. And very soon, uh, keep a lookout for top five least anticipated summer 2018 films. That should definitely be a very fun video to do. Uh, so, as always, everybody, this is 20 to Tiger Dude here with Film Fan. No, I'm just kidding. Aubrey, Kevin, yeah. Gary, and Film Fan. <laughs> And don't forget that all of us will always have <laughs> Tiger Asshole. Uncle Drew looks like shit. <laughs>